They say I'm gone, but I never left. Every time I pop up, I see these niggas take a breath. The rap game, yeah, it took a left. How the hell they listen when they really deaf? It's been a long time coming, but still I'm on smash. Never no breaks, I'm giving them all gas. Living for today, middle finger to pass. Also give it to the ones who thought I wouldn't last. Fake ass friends, never been family. The more I make moves, the more these niggas can't stand me. Smile in my face, but knowing they wanna ban me. Make up any lies so niggas can try to hand me. Tell it to the pen and telling it to the streets. But nigga, I'm in tune with the pen in the streets. No room for defeat when you facing a real loke. I ride by my lonely, so I see behind the smoke. Can't wash one hand without washing the other. Cause I'm a real keeper and my motherfucking brother's point guard of the streets. Some plays I had to change up. Nothing stay the same, remembering how I came up Dreams of a scholar Nigga bitching quarters for a dollar And hope one day I get that candy paint collar That's the street like East Long Beach like Never had a one track mind So I think twice Niggas think it's good shit Cause I stay on my deuces And still relevant But you knew this Never been a game While other niggas talk it I do this You can't make a move without a movement See I'm like a fly on the wall I can hear y'all talking The room get quiet every time I'm I walk in, center of discussion, I'm the main topic Yeah, pick that shit up, never drop it I'm on my shit, y'all can't stop it Money making moves, every dollar is a profit Respect my hustle, envy my grind I move around the clock, I don't waste my time If it don't make sense, some thoughts you better change Quick to eliminate certain individuals that you hang with Niggas wanna hold on to the wrong shit Ain't that a bitch, loose slip, sink a lot of ships, nigga Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, good afternoon. You now tuned in to Eastside Radio, Lil Bam. Solo Bolo today, uh, co-host out under the weather. But um, it's been a nice, lovely day today. Good weekend. Um, One thing I was uh, looking at going over social media, <clears throat> looking at stuff, uh, it's a lot of artists, um, new upcoming artists, um, that really feel they, uh, how could I put it, really worked for the spot that they in, as far as the overnight successors, and um, I would say, you know, the ones that's been doing it, let's just say a couple years, but the the... The complaints that I see them having, you know, uh, whether it's about the older cats, younger cats, right now cats, whatever it may be. One thing that's that's uh, mind boggling is when you get into any type of business, you're supposed to do your research. You're supposed to do your history. You know, you don't get into nothing without knowing, you know, what came before it. So. This whole paying dues and paying homage to artists, you know, that, that that day is over for whatever reason, you know. I didn't make it up, you know. I don't make or break the rules. I just, you know, I just follow them. And uh, I see that a lot right now, you know. It's a lot of older and younger generation gaps. Now, where did that, you know, where did that gap come in at or where did the – Lack of communication come in that that I still don't know, but I just know it's a lot of artists out now. You know they could get five ten minutes of fame. They get that five ten minutes of fame. They feel that they should be you know required to have nothing but red carpet events. Uh, you know, paid shows. Don't nobody even know them, but they 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 demanding paid shows. They haven't paid any dues. You know. Um, haven't hustled or haven't did the things that they were supposed to do to get to the point and success of the people um, of that industry have done and have gotten to. And I feel that that's, uh, you know, that, that, could, that could come with egos. Um, 
it could come with the lack of communication of the older cats as well, saying, well, you know what? Um, I don't fuck with him. Or I don't fuck with that dude. I don't fuck with him. You know what I mean? So that right there is kind of it's kind of tricky or iffy to me. And I really don't, you know, I really don't understand that. I I just I don't understand where where that has come to where okay the younger heads now not even in tune with the I mean we can say older heads because they OGs you know the the pioneers of the game and there's certain artists that keep there's certain artists that keep in touch certain older artists that keep in touch with the youth with the younger artists. Those are the ones, you know, I do respect. I do I do uh, respect those because it's, you know, they keep an eye on them. You know, it's not anything that they handing out. You know, I'm going I'm to hand this out to you. I'm going to hurry on and sign you to do anything. You know, a lot of, a lot of artists, they try to see what the younger generation is going to do. And not even just the younger generation, new artists, new artists, period, because it's a new artist every minute so as we talking now i mean shit five minutes ago every minute it was a new artist produced a new artist that came out but the thing is everybody is saying they doing it but is everybody really paying the dues and doing what they have to do um to do that so that right there is is just one of the things that i was looking at um on you yeah, I seen it on Facebook, seen it on a couple Twitter pages, you know, it was a couple people doing that. And I uh I actually got a question right here um on the Facebook. About to read it. Say Okay, see so this is kinda what was just talking about. How long should it take for new rappers or artists to get paid for shows. And that's Mike. Mike from Ohio. Um, you know, it's it's not really it's not really a a time frame on when you should get paid or how my thing is always knowing your dollar. Knowing knowing what you worth. If you know your dollar amount and you know what you worth, then you know you, you ride that until the wheels fall off. And you don't change that number if you charge four hundred a show, but it's no certain time frame you can put on that. Far as, oh, I should start getting paid three months out after I start rapping, or a year after I start rapping. It really depends on the time, the grind, and the effort that you put into this game. If you putting in time, if you putting in grind, and you know everybody is requesting you and 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 and, and wanting to book you. That's when you start knowing, you know, when you should start um, paying. It's, it's just really setting the foundation for yourself and setting a brand for yourself to where you know, like, look, this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm accepting. I mean, it's not really a time frame uh, on when you should get paid. But I always I, I will always say this. Um, know your number, you know, know, know your number and long as you know your number, you won't get gypped in anything. You won't get fucked in any type of business. Long as you know your number. You could go in with the you know, with a with a, a low number for you. You know, you might charge a thousand. You know, you might want to get paid a thousand a show. But you go somewhere and they wanna offer you, you know, fifteen hundred for the show. So you actually got paid five hundred more than your number that you wasn't going under. That that's that's the you know advice I would give to that. But I, I I me personally I don't think it's a certain time frame that you should put on it. As far as uh, when you should get paid or how you should get paid, what well, well as far as when you should get paid. Now we have another one, uh, Lisa. Lisa from Connecticut. She say. Why are all new artists so cocky? And half of their music is not even good. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, me far as n- knowing the artists, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I can understand where you're coming from with that. 
far as new artists, but uh, I think it's really just what the what the demand is out there, um, what everybody is playing, you know. So what everybody is playing, I, I guess you know, when it's of high demand and they know that that's what's hitting the airwaves right now. Uh, I mean, they play cocky with it. We got a call coming in. Go ahead, Carlin. Uh, uh, what's up with it, Bam? This your boy G. Lou, man. Just checking into the show. You know, I got to show love, homie. Oh I'm man. With you. Oh man, you, you dedicated, man. Got to get you a pack. Got to get a package out to you, man. Uh-huh. Got to get you a know, package out to you, love, man. Loyal, loyal fan. Hey, we um, I'm actually talking about uh, dues being paid. Right. And uh, you know, later on in the show, uh, when you get here, we got glasses. We got glasses coming in, but. Okay. Until then, no, I'm, I'm checking in late, so I'm just, I'm just. Oh no, nah. I'm hearing. No, nah, not five a problem. Minutes, what you were saying, though, so. No, nah. I'm getting, I'm in tune with what's going on. Go ahead. I'm right. Gonna... So far as far as um, uh, paying dues. Now it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of disconnect right now between artists, the right. the the younger artists, the upcoming artists, new artists, and the you know the pioneers and the legends and everybody that's you know. That's the old, the, the older generation, you know. Right. So my thing is, it's a lot of expectations that these new artists have as far as the, the, the treatment that they should get or the treatment that they getting after like a, you know, one record or five minutes of fame or 10 minutes of fame. They feel that, you know, everything should be a red carpet event or they should start, right. you know, just, I mean, off of. You know, one thing, they could probably do one feature and feel like, okay, well, I did a feature with this known artist, so now I'm charging 1500 a verse. I'm charging, you know, but they didn't get, you know, they're not, they not paying no dues. Right. So what, what, do you, what do you feel about the artists that have those expectations? Well, I think, man, it's, it's, it's like you said, it's a different game now. So, you know, you got the Internet and all these type of things going on now where artists feel, you know, they, they got some views or whatever they, 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 they put out. So now they feel that they deserve that, and they're looking at it from that type of standpoint, opposed to back in the day where, like you say, you really had to pay dues. You had to sell records and do certain things to really make you somebody. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a different type of game now where these artists feel that, and, and, and they don't even know probably the history of the game or what it really takes to get on and what artists did back in the day to where even your artists, your big artists, like you say, they feel they're not getting love from the big artists and whatnot. The big artists feel that way, like, nigga, you ain't paid no dues. You right. know what I'm saying? So, nigga, you got to pay dues. And even somebody as yourself, you can speak on this because you've been doing it for for a minute and, and really put in the work and pay the dues to where you are today. And, and you haven't even probably seen where you, you know, the, the, the fruits of that. You know what I mean? So right. these artists don't even know about that. It's just a new game to where these artists feel they can blow up overnight because it's just the internet, you know what I mean? But the internet ain't shit. You got to be in these streets and you got to really touch down and get the people to really feel you, to, to feel, you know, because cats can put something out on the internet and people that don't even know them can maybe like them, so now they feel that way. But these cats ain't even liked in their own city or, or their own, you know, uh, environment, you know what right, I mean? So right, right. It's, 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 a, it's, a it's a miscommunication or a gap in that, you know, I feel. No. I call it the real, you know what I mean, like people use the, you know, word loke, uh, you know, as a gangbang term. And I use right. it because everybody in this game right now is is, is lokes for the simple right. fact it's a lack of communication. Right. And, and oh, man, that's that's cold right there, you, man. You, you know, that's so. That's cold right there. Yeah, that, that, that's cold right there. But, but when because when, when you look at it, j- just think about it. You know, you have people that like being on time and you have people yeah. that just feel like time is nothing. They be right. there when they be there. Now, right. it's right before the show, you know, uh, brought this up. You know, I was just talking. We was just talking about this. I mean, me personally, I miss the old school. I miss right. how things me used too. to be. And, and, and everybody you know you can have your competition don't get me wrong you can have your competition and you know like how the whole Kendrick Lamar thing went down far as you know the friendly lyrical competition right. I get that but at the same time it's so many new artists 
that feel like I'm the shit. I ain't fucking with him. I'm not finna jump on no record with him. I'm popping more than him. I got more Instagram views than him. I got more Instagram followers than him. I ain't fucking with him. He only got a thousand followers. I got ten thousand. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, right. And so forth and so forth. When you know, when I was growing up, everybody worked with everybody. Everybody right. knew everybody. You, you look at you look at the the the, the Canon pictures that was taken back in the day. You know, I mean, shit, artists that probably haven't worked together, but they've been in the same environment. And and, and st- you know, you may catch a a, 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 a canon picture with Bobby Brown and Heavy D. You get what I'm saying? Right, right, just, right, right. just, just right. the slick shit. You know, uh, right. you know, uh, who else? Moni Love and MC Light. Just chilling. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that because everybody knew everybody, and it wasn't nothing to call on somebody when you needed something. It was more so right. you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Right. Nowadays, community. Yeah, 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 but but it, it it was a community of hip hop. Like like hip hop, yeah. they really took that shit serious. Hip hop wasn't just a word; it ain't a name. You know that shit is a a fucking culture. A yeah, it's yeah, a culture though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, culture. Yeah. And, and when you yeah. when you when you when you disrespect that culture, just think about when you disrespect hip hop head cultures. You have people come speak out. You know the most deafs and. And and, and, yeah. and and people like that that speak out like, hold on, you're not finna disrespect yeah. what we worked hard for worked on, yeah. and what we still work hard for. But yeah. all those now cats you can't even do that now. Now you, you can't speak out on anything unless oh, you a hater or, or this dude woundy woundy. Or they they might try to come at you foul and it's a whole bunch of shit just blowing up on Twitter and this this that. It's just about likes and dislikes now or, or just a. a uh, uh, hip, uh, whatever these sites are, they'll put it out there. It was beef. Now this, this, that's not beef. It's just me speaking on real shit and speaking on what I feel I need to speak on because this is my, this is hip hop, you know. And we can't even do that anymore. Well, right now, that's that's the day and age we live in. You know, you got those that say what one wants to hear, and you have those that say what they want to say, and don't care how you feel about it. And you know. Those are the minorities right now. I mean, you express yourself and tell people how you really feel in an area where those are of like minds going to just do the easiest thing to do or, or, or say say and do the easiest thing, which is to agree with everything. You have a lot of those people. They agree, smile, and laugh at every fucking thing. I don't care if it's not a joke. They still going to laugh. Now, those... Those are the type of people right now that run the industry. The minute that you're in a room, you're in the room, and a certain person that's supposed to be the funny person crack a joke, 12 people laugh, and you just, you know, keep a straight face. You know, the person that cracked that weird-ass, non-funny joke is going to wonder why you didn't laugh. Right, and right, it's going right. to give that person a reality check. Like, you know what? I might not be as funny as I think I am. It's just the right. motherfuckers around me that's funny acting and just want to ride with the easiest thing. And that's to agree. Right. And that's yeah. to agree. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and ride with that. That right there is, is what killed me the most, man. That's that's no what killed me the most. No real leadership, just followers, man. And everybody follows whatever is going that's the thing, too, like you said, that's the thing in hip-hop now. It's no real leadership. That's why everything sounds the same. And like I said, no disrespect to anybody doing their shit. Cool. But uh, it's no leadership. And that's why everybody just follows the trend of everything going on, and nobody can stand on their own. So that's why we don't have no no real hip-hop or no different. Everything sounds the same because nobody can stand on their own because they're scared to. You know what I mean? So it, that, that's to me is what's fucking up hip hop. No, like right. You said back in the day you had the Money Loves, the MC Lights, and and every everybody even from the West Coast to the East, and everybody knew who they were. Right, uh, right. You know, differently. That's what that's what brought hip hop together, and it, everybody it, can tell the different respect what was going on because oh, we can get this from over here, we can get that from over here, and everybody can you know that's what built hip hop now every everybody was everybody was sharing that's all that is you yeah, know what i mean yeah, but yeah, there you go there what you go. what thank thank you and appreciate that call though g lu like you tune that's in all the man. time man we gonna uh, yeah, we gonna go to break right now go to one of these videos and then um get back with uh glasses malone in the building okay 
Okay, I'm waiting on that computer too, boy. That shit cold, homie. I'm, oh. I'm waiting on that one, homie. No, for sure. Got you. I got you. All Appreciate right. it. Much love, man. All right, boy. Peace. Niggas carry heat and they blast them. Cause any given day you can get your car pool. Watch them mirrors while you dip in the car pool. Shit gets crazy. Bam! Don't try to hide. Where you been? Shit, sure, I've been trying to hide. No. What did I pay you for? Shit, I'm Shut trying. up! Now I need you to be responsible for once in your life and make sure this stop shop is still here when I get back. I got to go and make a deposit for all this money here. You hear me? Don't worry about that. We All right, this. that's both of y'all. Yeah, we got this. All right, do your job. We got this. Damn. Look at that motherfucker. Oh, yeah, we got this. No, that's me right there. Hey, wait, you make Yeah. Yeah, that's me all the time. Oh, yeah, put great right here. Right here. Yeah. It's good with it, boy. Y'all do drop offs? Oh, yeah. How long you need? Like three hours? Oh, yeah, I got you. All right. Damn this motherfucker clean. Oh yeah, this me right here. This right, man. We the East. They finna think everything, man. Right. And this motherfucker. Whew. And it, oh hell no. He got a hat to match too. Oh yeah, this me too. Oh shit. Yeah, put this shit on. Yes, yes, yes. And we are back. Tuned in to East Side Radio. Got one of the West Coast on in the building right now. Glasses Malone. A.K.A. G. Malone, hey. A.K.A. The Water Boy, hey. A.K.A. Watts. Hey. <laughs> we can just keep going on. A.K.A.s. Glasses low. Hey, see, yeah, there we go. Now, see, it's a, you got so many entities, man. Yeah. Glasses low. Yeah, yeah. I was I, glasses low for everything. So. No, nah, but you know what? I think glasses low came out on this glass house too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah he, 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 he came out. Yeah, that's that's what Glass House is all about. It's all about being Glasses Low. It ain't really about being Charlie or being Glasses Malone or being none of that. It's just that regular East Side Seventh Street nigga that used to sell Sherm every day. Right. So right. it's that mentality that's you know that's still living me today. So I mean, what made you just stick with the name Glass House for the album? Um, Glass House. I mean. It just really represents my attitude. Okay. Like, the way I make music is kind of funny. Like, Beach Cruiser is like my heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, the version that everybody heard wasn't the right one, but it still plays a part of my heart. It's it's how I feel, you know, my heart. It's like, you know, um, the soft spot I got for humanity. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear songs like Car Wash or songs like Club Heaven, that's what, that's what, um, that's what, uh, Beach Cruiser is about and it's, and White Lightning is like my soul it's like it's everything is it's everything inside of me you know what I'm saying it's truly like the it's how I view it's how I view society for real you know what I'm saying and, and Glass House is just my attitude okay it's just like it ain't really thick like that it's, it's just my attitude so when when I'm when I'm doing the Glass House it's just me really giving you the surface view of what's up in my life at that time Oh okay, yeah. I could I I I could kind of uh, I could see that because you don't have no no one album or mixtape that sound the same. It's no. a lot of artists that that do that though. But it, I could tell like when you spitting something in a certain time, it's it's at that certain moment in time. Like you might be on your shit yeah. at one time, you might be on some fly shit, you might just be on some street shit. But one thing that that's crazy about 
I, I guess that's what a lot of a lot of rappers that really got bars. You know, um, a lot of people know glasses, glasses logo. You know, but it, it's it's a, it's another side of you. You know, a prolific side. Yeah. You know, and and you know you speak well. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, really, just <clears throat> I've always been out of place. You know what I'm saying? Like even being in the hood, gang banging. I grew up in Compton and watched my whole life. Like I've always been out of place. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I just don't think I ever really belonged anywhere. You know what I mean? I, I kind of, you know, you live in Compton, but your 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 mom, you know, is a hustler and, and she getting paper, and you know, so you're not poor. Maybe right. like some of your other partners. I mean, right. Everybody in Compton I grew up with wasn't poor, but a lot of people didn't have what we had. Um, we had a pool, you know what mm. I'm saying, in Compton. So um, I was able to learn a lot, but I, I wasn't a nerd. Like, I just know how to study really good and fast. You know, I'm I'm, a, I'm really efficient with it. So, like, my life has really been an out-of-place situation where I'm always out of place. Even when I be in the hood, when I was in the hood every day, it's like I'm out of place because I stand for, like, a certain element of righteousness. So... I'd be arguing with the homies about dumbass shit and, you know. So um, my music is just a reflection of that. And and the diversity is, is, is genius at times, but it's not really that smart to do because people have shown, you know, over and over again that they want the same thing. They don't really want, you know, um, diversity. We all just think we want diversity. We really want the same thing. We just wanted a, maybe a little shade lighter, a shade darker. So, you know... um. Glass House, you know, like I said, it's my attitude. But obviously, you know, if, if you didn't follow any of my work, then you heard a song like Car Wash or you heard White Light. Oh, right, you right. heard things that really matter to society. But that's not what Glass House. Glass House is like, it's West Coast. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's my doggy style. You know what I'm saying? It's my it's my um, quickest the name. Hey, uh, and, and I'm glad you spoke on that because first off, I'm, I'm a... I'm a you need to go on here and get an award for this motherfucking, uh, this, uh, the skits you put on there. <laughs> now, that motherfucker, the, the one part that stick out the most, though, that motherfucker had me weak, man, when I listened to it. That motherfucker said, see, this is what I'm talking about. You know, you ain't answering the phone. She could be needing you right now. <laughs> <laughs> this so, nigga said, you not picking up the phone, not right, even for, for her. her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She might need you, you know what I mean? How you know she don't need you? What's funny is, man, I was going through it, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was something I was going through. It was um, my homegirl. Really, it wasn't a girl I was even sleeping with. And her, her dude just got out of the pen. And, like, a strange number called me, and I didn't pick up. I think, I didn't even see it. I think I looked at my phone, and she had called me, like, about 20 minutes later after I seen the call. And um, she was like, hey, don't answer this number, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why not? She's like, me and my nigga just got out the pen. You know what I'm saying? And he been going through my phone. <laughs> and I'm like, this nigga was in jail four years. And she was like, yeah, but he on. And I'm like, all right. Like, you tell him we don't, you know, we don't mess around. She's like, right. yeah, but he going to know it's you and it's going to be like still. So I'm like, all right, I respect her wishes and I ain't really answer the phone. And like I said, the nigga did like four or five years, so the nigga ain't that really tech. Like, he not tech savvy. No, right. He don't right. text. You know, we all text now, but he don't get it. So he kept calling, leaving these messages. <laughs> and um, it was right around the time that I was recording Glass House. Like, one thing I can say about my music is most of the time it's pretty old. It's like, it was my life a year or two ago or three ago. It's, it's hard for me to make, you know, today because I be so out there, you know what I'm saying, with thought, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so out there with thought that, you know, I already spent most of my life on the island. Like, you know, I always spent most of my life, like, North Korea. I don't like the isolation all the time. So right. I think most people be still a little bit behind. Like, when I, even when we did that good, like, we were so far out there on everybody with it. No, right, it right. It puts you on the island. So I have to give people a year or two back. So as this was going on, what the dude was calling me, and it was just crazy. And finally, I just got so fed up. You know what I'm saying? Like, the last skit, is, it's a little change of how it went. But when he called me the last time and I finally picked up, you know, I was just banging. Like, man, what's happening? Because you know me or something? Like, I know she told you, you know, we don't, we don't get down. Right. He's like, no, it ain't about her, homie. You know, at this is after, like, eight or nine messages of talking crazy. He's like, no, I'm just saying, I, I rhyme, homie, and I'm fresh out. Like, you could offer me an opportunity. And he just started rapping. And I just hung up in his face. And so that's, that's, that's why, that's why, 
in one of the skits, he say, oh, now I know it, this is you. Mm -hmm. He figured out who you was. And then now, hey, I rhyme and everything. I'm like, exactly. hey, I, I'm, I was putting it together. I'm like, man, where the fuck did he <laughs> nah, even come real. up with this shit at? Because I'm like, okay, it could be real. Because this nigga's out here like that. Yeah, yeah, nah, people love that girl, man. Now, now. I, I, I need you to explain this because I don't want to put my interpretation on it. First off, you know, the uh, the Glass House, I listen to it from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's actually an album you can listen to from top to bottom, mm -hmm. um, which we've been getting those rarely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for you to get something and have it out there like that where you can listen to it from front to back, do you feel is well... How do you feel the exposure, it, you know, do you feel you getting the recognition for it? I mean. Because, I mean, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a dope. I mean, that's this is me speaking. Sure, you know, sure, It's not because sure. you right here. Sure, no, no, no. Because it's a, a, a lot me, of. you the, out of everybody. You know, it's, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, I know it's, you ain't going to give me that. It's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of cuts. I mean, because, you know, I listen to you when you speak. Sure, sure. And then when you rhyming, it's just like you speaking. But when you rhyming, you get into something. Yeah, yeah, or it's yeah. always something. Even even when you, you know, playing around and you yeah, yeah, hitting bars, something. but yeah. it's still going to be something in there, like, to let a motherfucker know something once they listen to it the second, third time. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I think it's my responsibility, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as the business go, I'm still like a, like a work in progress. You know what I mean, like I was really good initially with the business, but um, I don't think I was great at Sonics. You know okay. So as I took time, like the last four years, just to learn music, just like let me chill out, let me learn what I'm doing before I put out Glass House. You know what I mean? Three years, I just took time and learned. You know, you everything else falls to the to the to the uh, wayside. You know what I'm saying? And when I put out the project, it was more just about getting it onto the marketplace and making sure people who wanted it could have it. And, um, you know, I haven't done a really good job at marketing it. So I'm not upset if people, you know, they haven't heard it. But the people who have heard it, you know, from Dre, Ty Dolla Sign, different people, you know, I know they, they are talking about it. And, and at that point, the job is done. So now my job is to constantly market it. Now I got to start figuring out how to make sure people hear it. And that's my job, too, because that's the that's the true whackness of independent that everybody kind of give props to it's like yeah, you, if you really independent you you are responsible independently for all of these things and, and it right. ain't gonna you know it ain't gonna get no easier so you know what I'm saying I gotta do what I gotta do and and I'm just starting to shoot videos for it like I said I only had one video it, it came out four months ago I only had one video for it the whole time so it leaked early I mean you you take your lumps and bruises I made possibly the best project and now I gotta go through the best promotion to make sure everybody hear it so uh, so what's what's different? What made you move different on this album? Like you say, you take, you know, you take responsibility for not marketing it properly. But what made you put together such a a a, 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 a clean project and just, you know, put it out there to the point to where you like, OK, I'm going to take my time on this. Is it because you wanted to you, you, you learn him, you being a student to the music? Definitely or in the business. Definitely the music <clears throat> part of everything. And and then the business is the business of marketing has never changed. I just ain't never had no marketing degree, nor have I actually fancied myself into marketing. You know what I'm okay. saying? So, you know, I didn't have a a a gimmick or per se an advertisement point. I just had a dope product. And at that point, I wanted to get it out on the marketplace. I actually wanted to wait, but you know, people wanted me to push it up, you know. Um, I mean, past that, man, I'm not worried about it, man. I'm I'm going to do 100000 on this, you know what I'm saying, independently. You know, I know how to, I'm learning how to do it, what I don't know. So it's just a matter of taking my time and and, um, and just delivering. I mean, it's it's all good. I know I got the right product. That's That was the hardest thing. Like this last seven years ain't been easy, you know, you don't have the right product, you know, like you can make dope art, you know what I mean, like drive-by music is a dope piece of art, Nightmare may be a dope piece of art, but it's not a quality product in the grand scheme of hip-hop, it's not a, it's not meant to be a sellable product, it's like the Mona Lisa, like nobody want to buy that ugly-ass picture, it's something that'll be appreciated hundreds of years later. But is that, is that a personal 
preference? That's a personal opinion you feel? Because I don't, I mean, I, I haven't heard the streets say what you're saying. Well, nah, I mean, I mean, you know. Because sometimes, you know, you can be your worst critic. Nah, man, it's, it's just a part of knowing that most people mind, most people ain't never did a drive-by. Or most people ain't never even been a victim of a drive-by. Our community is small. You know, that's just the facts. Where we from is small. Gang banging is a small problem in a great big world. So, you know, to have to bury somebody at a, at a, at a car wash, people don't care about that because it ain't something they have to be a victim of. You know, hmm. most people have insurance, you know what I mean, like in the grand scheme of the rest of the world. So we really telling our problems out to somebody who really probably don't care. But I think my first six years in this business from, you know, 07 to, you know, 2010, well, yeah, 2011 maybe, you know what I'm saying? It was just built on getting out all the shit that I went through for the last, like, 10 years, from 16 to, to, to 24, gotcha. you know what I'm saying, where we was, <clears throat> I was losing friends, was selling shine, getting in the shootouts, you know, low riding, just not really, you know, just going through so much trauma, you know what I'm saying? Growing up, even with my mom, you know what I mean? Even with my mom get going to the field, there was a lot of things I needed to express in my life that I think that just, you know, I thought, don't get me wrong, originally I thought that's how art sell. You know, so I thought it was art. I didn't realize hip-hop the way it is, but, you know what I mean? I just needed to express myself, and, and hip-hop became my platform to express myself, so I just was. At this point in my life and my career, it's about being great with music. You know what I'm saying? And Glass House 2 is a reflection of being great, you know, becoming great with music, but it's still based around my life. And it's a, it's a little shallow for my likings. You know, I don't, you know, I'm as much as I like Doggy Style, it's not one of the albums I listen to the most. I'm, I'm not into, like, I'm a Scarface. I like, I need my music to have depth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I'm just like that as a human. You know what I'm right. saying? I care. I'm, I'm, I'm a blues and soul nigga, you feel me? Not a funk nigga. So, but I have to recognize the rest of where we at that ain't their mind state. They don't, you know, we in, you know, we in, we in a war all the time. Right now where we at, it's a war, you know what I mean? And it's not really over anything. It's just the attitude of our side of the world. You know, we, we just got that attitude. We we going to find any reason, you know, to be at war because it's, it's more about the attitude. We, we got that attitude over here. And, and you know, as a, as a poet, I'm responsible. Poet is should know. As a poet, I'm responsible to report what's going on in our society, like thugging. Right. But then as a musician, I'm responsible to make sure I care about what everybody else got going on. Right. You know, and, and make the music for them. So I, I on this album, I got to be an artist with songs like Brand New. Right. And, 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 and nothing else because that's that's like a lot of me. No, and then I got dope. to be a a poet like on thugging, you know, I got, I got to make sure somebody else going to be able to know about Trayvon Martin, you know, 30 years from now, they're going to be able to know what happened. And then I was a musician on the other 10 or 11 songs. Um, I would say you was a, yeah, you brought out your, um, musicianship and the ice cube in you. I don't really, I say cube and, and, uh, uh, slight murder was the case. Mm -hmm. On price tag, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, price tag. I don't, I don't, I don't know where you was at when you did that, but just from the front to back, you know, I mean, what was your mind process? I mean, wh what even came about that whole song? I mean, because the whole song, though, it was a hypothetical idea. Um, you know, I'm pretty spiritual, I guess. I don't believe in Christianity, and I don't believe in all the shit Constantine orchestrate, but I believe in the stories of Jesus Christ, and I, I like the Bible. Okay. But um, it was a tough time. You know, you had to deal with Beach Cruiser. Beach Cruiser sold 3,900 first week. It took me four years to put it out. It wasn't the right album that I wanted to release. You know what I'm saying? It was like another version of it. Like, they didn't trust my version. Well, not they at the time. Mac didn't really see my version like that. Baby would have let me do anything, but... And it did 30, 30 and 900 first week. And that shit really, you know, I, I believed I was better than that. So <clears throat> it was a really bad place. And at that time I had left, you know, I just wanted to get off the label because I just didn't like, you know, me and Mac didn't agree on music. And that was like the principal reason I got into the business is to make music, not to right. make money. So I just got on my own and it was a, a a little funny time where I was like, just, I felt some kind of way. I never was to the point of suicide, but 
I just thought that'd be a dope idea to, man, like what if I was going to kill myself because I didn't like it and the devil came and tried to, I don't even believe in the proverbial idea of selling your soul like that, but no, right. yeah, I thought other people did. So I thought they would really enjoy, you know, an idea like that. And, you know, it came out good to the point to where, you know, we, we, we shot a little mini movie that's going to come out. That's like really dope. So, no, I mean, it, the, the, just the whole, I mean, first off the title, and then, you know, as you as you listen to the song Price Tag, I mean, it give you that murder was the case feel. Yeah. First off. Yeah. And then, of course, like, you know, you speaking on stuff, but you're not really going in depth. I mean, a lot of people, because a, a lot of people that I let hear it and a lot of people that heard it, oh, he's getting that Mac, he's doing this, he's doing that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. My my personal yeah. thing, that's, 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 you know, you basically... That was your form of expression at that point in time. That's how you felt at that present moment in time. Well, even even the song, you know, the idea of the song, you know, Beach Cruise to Drop. Can't believe this motherfucker flop. No, I right, right, right. Try to right. figure who to blame. This is my life, but niggas treat it as a game. So the pistol in my brain has the hammer peeled back. Because if I don't kill me, I'm going to go and kill Mac. But his kids will feel that, and he ain't did nothing to me. So if you listen to the song. No, no, right. Yeah, it's like. I want to blame somebody for my misfortune. And if I don't blame myself, I'm going to blame somebody else. Right. So, you know, Mac even called me when they played it on K-Day. Mac called me. You know, he didn't call me. The OG homie Big Mike called me from family. Shout out to Big Mike. And he was like, gee, man, this nigga Mac talking about you. Talking about you going to kill his kids on the record. And no. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and Mike said, I told this nigga you ain't stupid. Muzz called me. And then finally Wavy called me. And then Mac called me. I'm like, listen, man. Let's do a chain song, of command. <laughs> so <laughs> it was funny to me. But you know what I mean? like, But that just show you how deep music is. Yeah. You know what I mean? How much music touch people. And, you know, from... From you being an artist, me watching your career, you know, I, mean, I don't know if you feel you done something that no other artist has. Every artist I feel that got to a certain point done certain things different. Mm -hmm. It might be the same merry-go-round, you know, far as music is, is concerned, but far as doing it in a certain way, you know what I mean? Because you hitting, okay, you know, it's... All in the papers, all in the papers, all, you know, on on every media site, uh, commercials, 1.7. But you still doing shows in drive-by hoods, you know what I mean? Yeah. How important was it to keep the streets and everything? Because, I mean, you was doing shows in, 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 in blood neighborhoods, doing shows in... And I mean, you was just doing shows in areas where wouldn't nobody do shows at, and it worked. Um, I don't know, man. I don't think. I mean, Pam, you didn't know me for a minute, man. Ten plus years. I don't think it ever mattered to me. I don't think it matters to me. I don't think I even. You know, I don't perceive it the same way other people. Like I didn't grow up wanting to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I didn't get into it to be better than anybody. That's why I ain't never really wore jewelry or none of that. Like, right. I just kind of do it because it kind of like God just brought it to me. You know what I'm saying? It chose me. I didn't choose it, so I don't have a perception of how it's supposed to go. No, right, right. That's that's my number one problem. Like, I don't know. People always be like, "Man, are you be in your Bentley or you in your G wagon? You be in the hood?" It's like, yeah, I didn't know I was supposed to be nowhere else. Like, I didn't do it to move to Beverly Hills. No, right. Like, I never wanted to move there. I never wanted to move to Hollywood. I mean, I'm not knocking it. I'm just, I like Compton. I like Watts. I love Long Beach. And anybody know me know that I love this. I love my people. You know what I'm I love oh, people. Right. You know what I'm I love our people. So, you know, I, didn't, I, I don't think I even thought about keeping the street as much as I thought about, damn, I wish somebody would help me. So as soon as I could help somebody, you know, I just went and helped. Like, if the Athens was doing something and, and. And they was like, gee, man, we trying to put money on our homies' books. We're going to do a show at the family room. Okay, I'm, it's cool. I come over there. Yeah, well, I'm coming. Yeah, I come. You know what oh, right, and, right. Man, I wish because if I was in jail, I would want somebody to put money on my books. No, right. So, no, yeah, you, you was pretty much good everywhere. And it, I mean, that's why, like, I look at a lot of people that get interviewed and they get, you know, oh, you know, what you think you where you supposed to be or why you not where. That's why, I don't, you know, those type of questions I don't ask because it's a lot of a lot of even young homies, you know, they ask certain questions. And my thing is, 
if you know where you want to be and you know what you're doing it for, you shouldn't have to worry about what everybody else is perceiving of you or why you not where whoever is at. See, because you've been, I mean, a young money, who banging, but you still a regular individual. Yeah, that's the You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You still a regular individual. I can't stress it to people enough. I'm just a regular person. You feel me? Like I think they just a lot of people hear the name and they had them expectations because this per I mean, I just look at it like it's still a lot of following. Just because that artist is doing that, that don't mean I gotta do it. Well, I'm yeah, gonna I just, do me. I, I just didn't know what else Honestly, I thought what I was doing was the shit because my favorite <laughs> rapper did it. Scarface, you feel me? So oh, right, right. talk about Hove or Face or, you know, like, shit, I thought it was the shit. You know, I, I woke up and realized the other day, you know, other shit. But, you know, I don't think I ever thought I was the tightest or none of that. I just thought I was saying something that people wanted to hear. Like, I, I don't think I ever looked at it like how everybody else. It, I ain't never been that kind of person, you feel me? I'm... You know, no matter how much I gang bang and sold drugs and all that silly shit, like, I'm a street racer at heart, dog. That's like, I'm a competitive person. So, no, right. I mean, I don't think I've ever looked at it like it was wrong to be in the hood with some money or I never looked at it like I was opposed. I, I can't stand Hollywood because it just ain't for us personally to me. But, you know, it just ain't, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't think, do I think I wish I had more plaques and accomplishments? Sure. I just didn't. I didn't realize at the time that I wasn't making music for that. Now that I understand more, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm slipping. You know what I'm saying? But at, like I said, at the same time, I was just really, like, I wasn't making songs. I think the only one song I made in my life to try to be successful was two, Haters and I Get Dough. Okay. I hate those songs. I Get Dough, I like it. Haters, I hate that song. But it's like, I think those are the only two because I was on Cash Money. It was like, you need to make a song with Wayne. And it was but like. It, I, I get dough. It, it sound commercial. Yeah. And, and it was like, I did that because these two crazy white boys walked in like, hey, we want to do a song with you. And I'm like, how's that going to work? And they just was talking shit. And it just sounded like a little major key to me. But somehow it was still kind of tight. Hmm. Hmm. So I did it. But those are the only two songs I've ever made with intentions of being you know, like something. Every other song, like that good, I didn't make it with intentions on being a hit certified. I just made them because I wanted to have the song that everybody played. That's just, I think that's, that's just called good music. Yeah. And, and you, when you go to the, I, I stress this to, 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 I mean, upcoming artists, young artists, whatever, all the time. Like when it's authentic and it's good and it's that good feeling, I mean, it's timeless. Mm -hmm. When you making, when you making that, when you making that music, because, I mean, if you're making it for the time right now, shit, you ain't going to like it next year. Yeah. Because it's for the time right now. Tomorrow is gone. Today is here now. So it's like, okay, what what yesterday, yesterday came and went. So I ain't on that no more. The irony is, man, like, I don't think I ever made a song for today. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I said, Haters is the closest one I think I made. And I get dope, even though... I don't like I Get Dope. I like it, but I don't like it because none of my favorite rappers would have made it. So it's kind of like kind of cool when I think about it. I don't think I've ever heard anybody make a song like that. And as poppy as it sounds, it is very a gangster song somehow. But for me, that good is the epitome of my music career. You know, not certified, not east side, and, you know what I'm none of that. I get uh, that good because it was the first time that me, Head, Jimmy, my whole team, we made it. Okay. And we said, you know what? People think that they could have this club. They think Glass is just some kind of street dude. He just some dude that's some scummy loser, and he just a gang. He gonna come. I can make music as good as anybody here. Like I, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm as great as some of the people that are my favorite artists. Okay, I'm on the West Coast. Okay, let me make what y'all make. Yeah, at the time, it wasn't nobody doing it like that. You know, they wasn't sampling G Funk. Cause I remember be hitting Warren. Like, you think people gonna be cool with that? I'm like, bro, it's like, yeah, it's like. I know you just feel we just feel like you young. You know what I mean? You you this is a this is a classic song. Right. So, you know, at that time people were sampling vocals and we was like, Yeah, we gonna do what, you know, what Drake and them did. We finna take the stuff we grew up off of and make it for my little niece. Right, right. And so that's that's really right now to me my my, my, my best song and probably my favorite song. Now 
Is it my best lyrical performance song? Obviously not, but it's my classic. It's the one that you're going to a party today, and because we on the West Coast and it is about the party, and it is about the attitude, they're going to play that song. So for now, like, you know, my, my whole... My whole mind is just, I have so much fun, like, man, helping. I've been just focused on the homie Alcatraz out, making a Mexican hip-hop album. Okay. Helping K-Boy finally, like, get his, understand, like, he got to care about music. And, and, like, I care about it. I always have, but I really care about it and getting him to understand it. So, I mean, I don't even know what it's about, really, man. I, I just don't even, I'm just having fun, man. I'm happy, you feel me? I'm happy to be alive, and I'm happy to be making this music. And, and you know, I ain't going nowhere. Like, I ain't finna back down you know what I'm saying it's good so right right now what what you what you got coming up and you know where can the people go to find you your music and you know tune into whatever it is you got coming up shows tours and all that um I really ain't doing no shows um I gotta do the crush groove on the 24th at the forum you know with Snoop and them shout out to AD and, and Snoop Warren shout out to Warren you know what I'm saying he always been good to me Mag all of them legends on that show. So it's dope to be, you know, amongst all them legends and even your name affiliated with them. Right. Um, I'm only working on one show for June. Okay. I ain't doing no shows in the town. Like, I'm not doing no shows in L.A. because I got to keep getting this music spread first. But I'm going to do a show in the town. I'm producing a whole show myself. Like, And where is that show going to be at? Um, I think I'm going to do it at the, at the Nokia. Okay. Like, it'll be my... Um, it'll be like my first... Um, It'll be my first um, show in a long time here. And it's either going to be at the Nokia or at the um, Observatory. But it'll be a real show. It ain't going to be like, you know, me holding my, my jeans and, and holding my nuts and, and holding this mic. It's going to be a real production, you know what I'm saying? Um, And right now I'm just dropping all of the videos, you know what I'm saying? I'm just finna start putting out the videos so people could really see, so I can start – Letting people see what I was doing, you know, right. let you see what I'm thinking. So, right now, my goal is to take the album to 100,000. As far as where to find me, I'm Googleable, man. Or if you if you ain't, it, it's the only G wagon to watch. You know what I'm saying? Or <laughs> it's like it ain't hard to find me. I'm easy. Shout out to Big Glasses coming in. You know, blessing Eastside Radio. Yeah. Y'all tune in next week. Same channel, same time, same Eastside area. Eastside Radio. Eastside Talk Eastside Radio Instagram and Talk Eastside Radio Facebook. Y'all go ahead and get at me this little bam and I'm out.